Here I am at Aston Martin's headquarters in Gaydon, just about to do something that every hack in Europe would kill to do, and that is to take a ride in the new Aston Martin 177. That is the 200 mile an hour, 1.2 million pound supercar, of which only 77 are going to be made. Nobody's driven it yet. I'm about to ride in it. It's a little bit exclusive to drive just yet, but it's going to be demonstrated to me by somebody very special, Chris Porritt, who is the chief engineer of the program, a man that spends half his life racing Aston Martins and has just been doing exactly that in Daytona. Chris, what can I expect from this car? I think you'll expect a, uh, a very unique experience, Steve. Um, it's, it's obviously a very special car to Aston Martin. It's a very raw and pure car and obviously very exciting as well. Um, what we wanted to do was make sure that we've got customers in cars before inviting people as yourself along. But as you say, now's a good opportunity and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Chris, the key question for me about this car is, what were the terms of reference when you set out to build it? He, clearly you had a range of Astons that we all understand, but this is something special. How was it defined in the first place? Well, the idea was that we would do a car that would be considered as the ultimate expression of an Aston Martin today. So it would have the best performance, um, the most um, extreme design, if you like, and the uh, sort of demonstration of what you know Aston's of the future could be. So it has to be unquestionably an Aston. If you take the badges off it, it is unquestionably an Aston. The architecture is effectively a, a development of what we learned from doing the VH architecture cars, so the V8 and the DBS, and sort of taking some of those those elements and, and making them a little bit more extreme. Right. So putting the engine behind the front axle centre line allowed us to be able to drop it down, which meant we could lower centre of gravity, means cornering performance is better, but also means it gives us an opportunity to, um, to have a better weight distribution in the car as well. So all of these things were just pushing the, the sort of the capabilities of what are the things that we'd already learned from right. doing DB9 and V8 Vantage. So it produces 750 horsepower, 750 newton metres of torque, and the original design brief was that the engine needed to produce over 700 horsepower. Um, and it was interesting when we ran the first engine on the dyno. I remember calling Dr. Betts and saying, Dr. Betts, right, we've got 717 horsepower. And he turned back to me and he said, uh, Now your target is 750. <laughs> so <laughs> we went back to the, kids, the guys in the design team and said, You know, what do you reckon? And they said, You know what, I don't think we'll be too far off with that. So they, they did a little bit more work, did some analysis, and, uh, and proved that we could get to 750. And not only is the car much more powerful than any other Aston, it's also lighter I believe. It is, yeah, we're, so we're using the carbon fibre structure and using um, new materials to Aston Martin in some of the areas, so the magnesium torque tube, uh, using some clever integration of some of the systems on the car, so we looked at the uh, engine intake coming through the structure of the car, that allows us to be able to save quite a bit of mass. I see, and this the interior has, has Aston Martin overtones the, the exaggerated uh, centre stack and so forth on the instrument panel, but the but it is completely unique in this you know, unique in this car. Absolutely, it? yes. I mean, again, it's using the sort of design language that we have from our other cars and making it a little bit more extreme, or certainly in the in the case of the waterfall feature in the in the middle, making it completely different to look at, but very pure and elegant, and it sort of gives this sweeping, fast yeah. look to the interior of the car as well. And I gather every single little piece of uh, metal or decor, the metal is all metal and some of the, even the, this surface of the uh, console that I'm looking at is, um, is, is a piece of aluminium machine from solid. Yes it is. Yeah, Amazing. so you can imagine this centre part here which is probably the best part of a metre and a half long is machined from one big billet of aluminium. Amazing. It's nice for customers to come and look at the car and actually see some of the attention to detail that's gone into the machining and the engineering under the skin. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's also obviously a pleasure to show people as such as yourself. Tell me about the gearbox. There's a, um, you, it's it, clearly a paddle shifted. It, it's rear mounted six speed, but yeah. it's not a twin clutch gearbox. No, it's a single clutch gearbox. And a lot of that is down to a, a dual clutch transmission it tends to be quite large and, um, and fairly heavy. Um, the other thing, obviously, in the time scale that we had for this program, to engineer that into our products was going to be a, uh, a stretch too far. 
So what we did was we used a development of the uh, six-speed transmission that, that started life in DB9's manual gearbox and then later in life went into V8 Vantage as a uh, auto shift, we call it sport shift manual. So this is a development again of that system. So we've learned again using the knowledge that we had from V8 Vantage, using the knowledge from DB9 and the, the construction of the gearbox, we've improved that and uh, applied it to this car. When uh, you get a minute, can you just run us through the gears and show us what it will do? I can indeed. about 180. Yep. That's the first time in my life I think I've been through a corner at 160. <laughs> <laughs> Felt good though. That's Felt good. It's very stable. Yeah. yeah. I've never been in a car where the last shift into top has happened at 180. That is quick. It's quite exciting, <laughs> isn't it? But also, you just suddenly see what what you're asking of a chassis when it has to cope with 700 horsepower. It's, if you think about, and this, this is one of the areas where we looked at, do we, make, do we try and make a car that is the quickest car that you can possibly make? And I think you end up with too much of a compromise. So what we said was, the car has to do over 200 miles an hour, because it's an important thing that it does that. Yep. It's an important landmark. Um, whatever it does after that is almost immaterial, um, but you have to be able to access that and it has to be stable up to that point. So here I am at the end of an amazing day at Aston Martin's test track at Gaydon. Spent several hours in the passenger seat of a 177, 1 1.2 million pound car. Amazing experience. Quite a lot of time at more than 100 miles an hour. Just a few minutes at 190 plus. Amazing experience. This is the delivery suite where people would come and collect their 177. That car behind us is gonna to go to some lucky owner. Unfortunately, it is not gonna be me.